Mental health. One of the world's most important yet undermined crises to ever hit people all around the world. Whether it be anxiety, depression, or another mental struggle, everyone can relate to feeling as if there is no way out of their own head. But maybe there is a way to start a turning point in the mental health game. That is what we'll be diving into today. We're your host, Ian Sharpenshay. And I'm Lindsay Bork. And this is the Marking Milestones podcast. So, okay. I mean, like talking about mental health in general, like I, I feel like everybody at some point in their life has like had a, you know, somewhat of a mental struggle. Sure. Like, I mean, for, for me personally, like I, I can remember as like a kid even just having like a, like a weird, like, worry feeling all the time mm-hmm. like uh it, it could be anything from like, like just being at school and just like having like like friends there with me or whatever mm-hmm. and just like no matter what it, it was we could be having like fun having like a good time in school and i would still feel like oh no something's, something's like some type like, of worry or yeah like, like just for no for no reason mm-hmm. it's just like just lying there like it's just over me yeah like, I didn't really have it as a child, but now, like, being a parent and yeah. having a family, I get that sense of worry and feeling of worry sometimes. Like, I might have a situation and then I can see the good in it, but I can also see, like, the negative way of it. And a lot of times I'll lean towards the negative way, like, oh, my gosh, like, this could happen. Yeah. And instead of thinking of it more in a positive way. Yeah. And so that's where I feel like the anxiety comes in and the worry comes in with that type of thing. I mean, like, do you think, like, be- becoming a mom added on, like, a lot more of it? Just, I mean, like, from, the, from, the, from like, the way the world is today and having a kid now, I'm terrified to have kids now, like, at I all. mean, sure, I feel like it, it maybe added some type of anxiety because... Even just having like your first child yeah. is scary because I have I had no clue how yeah. this was gonna be and then <laughs> it's like okay now I have this human being that I have to see about constantly make sure that right. they're okay um, and also just like you know bringing God into the picture you know faith I am my child's protector here mm. on earth for Father God, so I have to make sure that my child is going to know him, right. is going to have him in his life, because if I don't, then who will? Yeah. You know? Um, and so I feel like sometimes anxiety and worry can uh, push your faith away, oh, in, sure. a, in, a, in a sense. Yeah. Or, um, I don't know, just the surroundings of everyday life can sometimes drop your faith. Yeah. But, well, like, for sure, in, in that regard, like, um, like the, the lack of faith, if you don't have faith, like, surrounding your life, I think you're more uh, susceptible to, like, you know, anxiety, depression, and, and, and different things. Uh, when that's when the negative will drag you. Right, in. right, for yeah. sure. Um, and, like, w- with my anxiety... Um, even now, and as, as a kid, I guess it was different, but, but now for sure, as I've gotten older, I've, um, I've looked for, for like methods and, and like different things to help cope with it that were nowhere near God, whether that be like a healthy habit or like a very unhealthy, sinful habit, it doesn't matter like what it was, it, God wasn't the so thing that I turned to. Do you feel that like you were trying to find something, not to replace him, but trying to, to find... Avoid. Right, trying to find yeah. something to help with it, but you were going about it in the wrong way. Yeah, hundred yeah. percent. Like that, that it could be anything from like uh, a healthy thing, like I don't know, like art was a healthy thing, right? Uh, and it was a good thing, but God wasn't like the first uh, priority. For, yeah, and but then like the unhealthy thing, like oh, like I'm having a bad day. Let me go smoke a cigarette. Or let me go drink a beer because like I'm 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 freaking out. I need to like fill the void with something because it's 
I don't, I don't feel right. Mm -hmm. God wasn't like the very first, you know, jump to, to him, go, go read scripture right. or go listen to something. Like, where do you feel that he, God all of a sudden jumped into your life? To fill this void, yeah. or I don't know how I'm trying to say. Like, where does he help with the anxiety? Like in the recent like, time? Ha, right. Has it has he come? Yeah. To you now, like, how are you coping um, with it? Now, because like throughout the years of having it, especially through high school and stuff like that, uh, I've always had to do like the the meditation and sit there silent for this, you know, and that just doesn't work for me. I think everybody's different with that because mm -hmm. I've, I've met friends that have like severe anxiety, like passing out, you know, having a really bad time with it and all that. And right. They say, oh, yeah, like I, I meditate for like three hours a day and I'm doing wonderful. Like, and I, I just I can't do that. Right. Like, there's no way that I can sit there <laughs> in silence. And you know me, like, I cannot do that. Uh, <laughs> and uh, I had a teacher um, in school that um talked about this a little bit and she she always said like um if you have anxiety close your eyes and and count for 10 seconds i'm like oh god like here, here we go another meditation mm -hmm. uh, thing she's like no just, just listen close your eyes breathe for 10 seconds the minute you open your eyes name 10 things in the room that god has put in your life oh wow i was like what what do you mean? Like, God, like, like what, like the, the lamp? Like, uh, I mean, like it didn't make any sense to me at first, mm -hmm. but as I got older, I was, I, I, I've, I've noticed myself doing it now more than ever where like, I'll have like a really bad panic attack and close my eyes for 10 seconds and open them. And the minute I open them, okay, uh, God's giving me light. God's giving me a house. God's giving, I'm like, oh my, okay. And like the, the panic attack goes away. And I'm, I'm there sitting with my thoughts of, oh my God, like he's given me so much that I've taken for granted mm -hmm. and that, that my worries and me being in my own mind is nothing compared mm -hmm. to like what he's done for us. Right. It's minuscule. It's small. It's mm -hmm. something we shouldn't give much attention to because he's always there. Right. I feel like that comes with maturity too. Yeah, it does. Like, for sure. You know, whenever you're younger, you don't even realize the things of the world. Yeah. Or like bringing God into the picture. Um, you just know what you've been taught. But as you mature and you get older, um, if you grow in your spirituality, then you have him more constantly with you. And um, you'll have those moments. Like I remember um, just the other day, I'm at home by myself with my son and I go to walk into the hallway and um, I just found myself like staring at our bedroom at my husband and I's bedroom and it just it was as my bed was made the lamp was on and I just stood there and I don't know like this just sense of peace came over me and I just start feeling like man I don't uh, like feel like I appreciate you Lord as much as I should like, you've given us so much, and we have all these blessings, and I feel like there's things that, like, I need to thank you for, and I feel like I don't take the time throughout my day just to stop and tell him thank you for the things. Mm -hmm. I feel like I'm, I'm more of like, God, this is what I need from you right now. Yeah, it's more of a need than, yes. like, thank you for what I already have. And I was like, in that moment, I was like, man, like... yeah. No, it shouldn't be like that always. It shouldn't just be what we think that we need right now. Like, right. I need you, I need you. No, like, sometimes it needs to be thank you. Thank you for all this that you've given us that's all around me. Like, I have so much. Right. Like, are, we really are so blessed, you yeah. know? I'm, I'm glad you bring that up because it reminds me of, um, so, okay, um, I watch all kind of different, like, um, travel people, like, and stuff like that, like, mm -hmm. on YouTube and whatnot, and... I think I've told you the story. I might not have. I'm not sure. Um, but these guys were invited to go uh, meet the Dalai Lama uh, mm -hmm. across the world. Mm -hmm. And not only were they invited to go, and by the way, the, the YouTube, if you ever want to go watch the video, is Yes Theory. Best, like, travel uh, guys I've ever seen. 
But they were invited to go to the Dalai Lama's place, his palace or whatever. And not only that, but they were also offered to ask him one question. Just one. Like, and they were like oversimplifying it and like having so much anxiety. They were like, oh my God, like, he, he's the, the Dalai Lama. Like he's this holy presence on earth. And like, how do I, what do I ask him? There's so many things that you can ask him. And he's, they, they were like, he's probably been asked like, the same questions like a thousand times how do i make my question like better than all those kind of Mm -hmm. and they finally get there and they're in the room and they have like them and like a hundred other people and they didn't realize that they got there that they weren't um for sure gonna be able to ask the question Mm -hmm. they were just like asked to come and have a question right ready um but God allowed it to happen where they actually did get to uh, ask their question. Mm-hmm. And they asked, they said, um, there's a lot of people my age, our age, you know, between the ages of 15 to like 30, mm-hmm. of, you know, having mental issues and, and mental health issues and anxiety and depression. And he was like, yeah, how, how do we break that cycle? How do we get out of that? And the Dalai Lama looks at him and says, there's too much self-centered attitude in the world. Mm-hmm. Too much me, me, me. And after all that me, 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 then we have anxiety. Mm-hmm. Because, I mean, you sit there and, and you're constantly like, oh, I want this, or, 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 you know, it's my time, me, me, me. I'm supposed to have this right yeah, now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then afterwards you're like, oh, uh, and you start freaking out and, and having anxiety. Or if it doesn't go your way, it's yeah. like, oh, it's, well, yeah, 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 blowing and it, up. Exactly. <laughs> and ever since I saw that, I, I've been thinking about that. Like every day, I'm like, you know, let me not have so much self-centered attitude uh, towards the world, and and start like putting my positive energy out, mm-hmm. and then maybe positive energy will come back. Right. And I, I've noticed it more. Like I've been acting like that with uh less of like a you know self-centered view on the world and i've I've noticed that my anxiety has dropped Mm -hmm. that's one thing that i will say for sure has worked for me Mm -hmm. is if you put positive out in the world it's going to come back to you i think that's what god god is trying to explain to people and just i don't know if it's the time that we live in now or or what but there's so much self-centered attitude that we we throw him underneath the rug thinking like you said um it's almost like you, you call on him when you need him rather than you know just because right yeah he wants you to need him i think yeah you know but he he also wants you to recognize what he's given you i feel like mm-hmm. and for somebody your father that's so great to you um i guess because it's something that we don't see every day that you feel that I feel like um, you don't take you don't you're not thinking about taking the time to thank him. Does that make sense? Like yeah. Um, and it's, it's not like having like a sticky note on your door every right. day saying like hey do this. Right, but like shouldn't uh, it be? It should be. I don't know. Like, <laughs> in, in your own in your mind, it should be like you know always there. Always, yeah. But right, yeah. I don't know. It's just. But that's like that's like me like. Uh, in the morning, when I wake up, the first thing I think of is, okay, let me go from the coffee maker. I got What my, can I do uh, Yeah. this morning? <laughs> yes. I got my coffee going, getting made. I have my clothes ready for work, and I got my car started. But not once did I wake up and say, let me pray, and thank you for even being alive this morning. Mm-hmm. And let me tell you, the days that I do, when I do wake up, and that's the first thing that I do, is pray yeah. Or the best days that I have hmm. is the days that when I wake up, like, oh, what can I do? Oh, I have to wash the clothes. Oh, I have to go see about this. Yeah, yeah. Oh, let me hurry up and do this before my son wakes up. Like, yeah. that's the days where everything's chaotic, everything's crazy, all out of whack. But the days that I wake up and I say, I'm gonna thank the Lord first, and I'm gonna give, I'm gonna pray to Him first. Hmm. Those are the best days. I feel like. So if, if we could just remember that when we wake up to try to do that, whenever we wake up, I feel well, like yeah. it's so much better. I think some people don't realize, um, well, 
let me rephrase that. I think more people feel as if having a faith or religion or um, relationship with God, they see it more as a chore rather than a, a positive impact in their lives because of what they see other people doing. Mm -hmm. You know, you see other people, other Christians, other Catholics, oh, I have to go to Mass on Sunday. I have to pray three times a day. I have to pray after before every single meal. Mm -hmm. It's the I have to, I have to, I have to that mm -hmm. people are seeing in, mm -hmm. in faith and religion. Right. They're not seeing the fact that, like, what you just said, and I, I've even noticed it, too, like, in my mornings, whenever I have, like, a prayer or a religious song playing, like, on the way to work. Mm -hmm. Those are my better days. People don't see that if you do have that relationship with God uh, in the morning or whenever during your day, that you're... You know, by your own choice, putting positive energy, vibe, whatever, into your day. Into your day. Right. Into your life. Right. And that'll only spark more positivity to come. Right. You know. It's the same thing when we wake up and we like sluggish and yeah. we woke up on the wrong side of the bed, aggravated. Already How's your day going to go? Yeah. It's going to go Totally bad. wrong and aggravated and bad. Yeah. It's negative. That's yeah. it. So why not try to change it in the morning whenever you wake up and just try. Yeah. Just try to do that in the morning first thing, you know? Well, and like the, just try, like, because whatever I have to go back to like the, the anxiety and depression thing with, with all of this and what we just talked about, I've had a lot of people like, uh, just say that, like, oh, just, just wake up happy. Wake up like, <laughs> oh, and it's, uh... Like, you can just say that, but does yeah. it really mean that that's going to happen? Yeah. Like, like, come on. Or, like, just, just smile more. Or, like, yeah. just try to do something good. Or, like, that's some of, like, the worst advice you can give somebody that has anxiety. Let's get something. real. Yeah. You know, like. Yeah. I, I'm not going to wake up one day and just be like, oh, my God. <laughs> like, yeah. an, an angel all of a sudden. Right. Um, but that's where I, you know, I think, like, small steps of, like, putting it into your life. Mm -hmm. Um, not like, cause I've had times where like, I tried that whole thing, that whole approach of like, I'm going to wake up and I'm going to go to church and I'm going to like change my whole life. And that was probably the worst because I dumped on like a whole different like blueprint of my life on myself, mm -hmm. which was not good because like, I, I, did like a complete, complete 180 of like jumping to like bad stuff mm -hmm. because I was trying to, it's so hard to be like good and, and happy and all this stuff and it just amplified my anxiety. Right. Because I wasn't doing it healthy, like the healthy right. way. Right. This is how my day is supposed to go. This is how it's going to go today. Yeah. I was and that's not force, always how yeah, it's going to go. Forcing it. Because know. life doesn't work like that. Right. You know, things happen and then yeah. our lives get turned upside down and it's like yeah. all downhill from there. You know, but I mean, you can take the time to ask him to help you with that. Like, yeah, I'm going to try to do these things each day. I'm going to try to make sure that I have prayer time and time with you. Mm -hmm. um, but can you please help me to have that time with you? Yeah. You know, because sometimes it's like we get so caught up in the day that is we don't have we don't take the time to have with him. And I'll ask him all the time, God, you think today that you could just help me to find the time to be with you? And I'm telling you, every single time that I do that, he finds a way. Yeah. Like, my son takes a nap, and then it's like, it'll just hit me in my head. Like, oh, wait, this is my time yeah, to be like, with you. Like, let time. me go do it. Yeah. You know? Yeah. It's if you're going to choose that time that he's given you to have it with him, or are you going to choose to go do the dishes mm -hmm. or go do something that you think you need to right. be doing at the time? And, you know, I like to believe that, well, this is like a for sure, like, well, duh kind of answer, but I for sure feel like the uh, disciples and apostles probably had, like, the worst case of anxiety and depression throughout, like, their time. Absolutely. Uh, you know, just, <laughs> and I always go back to thinking of that um, and their hardships versus, like, what we go through now. It's so it's diff it's so different. It is. Um, not that I'm trying to like undermine like or, or like. But don't you think that they uh, had like a struggle in time? Yeah. You know, clearly, like. <laughs> you know, 
and but I, I see that as like a uh, like a motivation. Like they had people going after them, trying to kill them and like attack them and tear down their fate, and they still how much more of a struggle? Yeah, exactly. Like you know. You know <laughs> You know, like, our struggle amplified, like, 100%. Right. You know. And if they could get through it, yeah, then why? Like, exactly, <laughs> you know. Um, which is, well, I struggle with that a lot of thinking of myself as, like, uh, Peter. Mm-hmm. A lot. You know, because if the situation came up where I had to be like, yes, I, I'm a Catholic. I believe in Jesus Christ. I would probably sit there and say, like, no. <laughs> like, straight up, dude. I, I don't know who that is. You'd be afraid. Yeah. At the time. I'd be terrified. Right. Um, and I wouldn't know until I'd be in that situation specifically mm-hmm. of like, uh, you know, I'd have somebody with a like a terrified you know, situation. Yeah, I don't, I don't, I wouldn't, I don't know how that feels. Right. Uh, but knowing myself enough, mm-hmm. I think I would like, you know, cower well, just a little like bit. And, in everyday things, yeah. like. I've had things come up where, like, I'm with people and then they start talking about, like, faith and stuff or, like, how they're doubting things. And I feel like, this is my time. This is my time to defend him. And then they say something to make me feel a certain way. And it's like, "Mm." like, I just cower down and clam up. And, like, and I'm, like, afterwards, I'm, like, feeling so horrible because I'm, like, this was my time to defend you, and I didn't do it. And, like, it makes me feel so bad. Mm-hmm. Like, it makes my heart hurt. Like, how could I make my father feel this way? Because I feel like I just let him down, like, so bad. Yeah. And I feel like I've been in those situations a lot of times. And it's always, like, those people in, like, family members or, like, people in your life that's oh, close. The, and yes. so it's so hard because it's, like... The closest ones see you. Yes. Oh. And then, so then, that's whenever... They will still say something and it's like, okay, well, I'm just not going to say nothing right now. But instead, I feel like I need to be like, God, this is the time for me to defend you. In my mind, be like, God, please help me. Like, help me right now. Like, stop and just ask him. Like, please help me and like, just speak through me. Because when they ask you something where you feel like you don't know the answer to is when I feel like I just shut down. Okay. Well, so this is how I look at it. Um. With that kind of stuff. So, I believe that that all people have, like, you know, two sets of anxiety. You have your human anxiety. The everyday problems that you go through every, you know, Mm -hmm. um, where, like, I have somewhat of, like, a social anxiety. Where, like, if I'm in a big group of people, I'll I'll freak out a little bit. I can't breathe. Mm -hmm. I have to get out. Like surrounding world problems. Yes. I guess you could say. Like, yeah, yeah, exactly like that. Um, yeah, your surrounding world. Mm-hmm. Uh, that kind of anxiety versus the other part, which would be spiritual anxiety. Right. Um, which isn't only being afraid to open up a topic with somebody or like explain to them what's right and what's wrong. Right. Also would be like, I know people that are afraid of a uh, priest or a church because mm-hmm. of things that they've heard. Right. And they have anxiety. Like, I have anxiety in, in church mm-hmm. whenever I go. And that's just, like, I think my own personal thing that I need to figure out. It might be because of the people mm-hmm. there. But anyway, there's a lot of different spiritual a- anxieties that people have. But I think, like, where I get a lot of my spiritual anxiety, which you're kind of, like, going into, is when somebody... Is like they, they say something, they say like a certain thing. I don't know what, like, I don't have an example right now off the top of my head. Mm-hmm. And like you said, it's like right now's my time to just be like, you know, straight up telling, like, no, this is this what's, is, yeah, this is what's right. Not, <laughs> right. not like that. And, but instead, I, I turn back into that Peter. Yes. Where and like, I, uh, you know, I don't know nothing, nothing about that. Because I feel like then the question in your mind goes, how do I answer this question without making this person feel bad about themselves mm-hmm. or, yeah. or not knowing See, what to say, you know? And, and I think in, in, in that regard, the both the human anxiety and the spiritual anxiety intertwine. Because right. at that point, it's not just spiritual anxiety of, you know, pleasing God and 
doing what God wants me to do. It's also my human side of, well, this person might not like me. Right. Uh, after this. Right. Or, you know, uh, I might make them feel uncomfortable, or I don't, I don't feel comfortable talking about it. Exactly. And it gets into, and I think we need to work on knowing the difference between the two. It shouldn't matter it shouldn't if we matter. feel uncomfortable. Right. It should be that, no, you are speaking the truth. Right. And this is what God wants us to do. Right. Does that make sense? Like, yeah. So we shouldn't be worried about all these worldly yeah. things. It's like the, the age old question that, you know, that your mom would ask you, like, oh, if your friends are going to jump off a bridge, are you going to do it too? Yeah. You know, <laughs> it's something like that. Like, right. Uh, you know, if if all your friends are going to agree with the fact that, you know, oh, God doesn't exist. You are you going to do it too? You're going to do it too? You're going to think that? You know, yeah. are you, or, or if your friends allow uh, dark negative things coming into their lives, you know, that affect them very badly. Right. Are you going to do that too? Just because, you know, you're this human world is... You feel too is, uncomfortable yeah. to say that it's not right. Right. Yeah. Right. right. Yeah. It is hard to, um, to find a, a correct way to like tell them what's right and wrong. See, and then that's when I feel like instead of just being afraid in that moment is when I need to know to, to lean on him, mm. like to lean on God and to say, this is what I need you. Yeah. I really need you to help me now. Come on. Like, help me, yeah. help me answer this question. Help <laughs> me. You need to come speak through me because I'm trying so hard and I just need you to be with me right now. Like, yeah. you know, and in, instead it's like, we just run away. But in that moment, I feel like that's what I would need to do, like, for myself. Yeah. It's like, I need you right now. Like, come on, you know? So, like, um... And I feel like that can be with anything. You can. Your worldly anxiety, your yeah. spiritual anxiety. You can. Lean on him, um, you know? And, see, like that, um, in high school, we, I know I've told you this, but, like, we've had uh, religious groups and all that, like, where we mm -hmm. got together with, like, our own age group and, like... You know, um, what was it called? Adoration uh, circles, mm -hmm. where it was like, uh, no, not adoration circles. I'm sorry. It was uh, um, affirmations, mm -hmm. verbal affirmations. Okay, yeah. Uh, where it was like a group of us, and it was like the most awkward thing ever because these are people that we've been in school with together, <laughs> yeah, and like made fun of and like did like stupid stuff with them. Being silly and friends and yeah. whatever, yeah. And now we're sitting in a circle in the dark with a lit candle telling them how much I love you and like really going deep You're getting into deep. serious deep things yeah right and and man it was around that time where I, I had a lot of anxiety for that kind of stuff like because social anxiety and just like not knowing how to act in, in front of people I was terrified of that like I'm breathing wrong like that's how that's how far it went like where I was like <laughs> I'm breathing and blinking wrong um, I feel you because I yeah. feel like I'm like talking in front of people, you yeah. know, it's like. <laughs> um, but in those situations, I would I would do what you're talking about where um, right before it was my turn or whatever, like the, the whole thing was where it was going to be me talking. I would take like, you know, a couple seconds or a couple minutes and just talk to God in my head and be like, look, dude. <laughs> dude. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, I need you to guide my tongue mm -hmm. you know i want you and the holy spirit to come down and you know guide what i have to say because mm -hmm. i in that situation it's like you know if i say something and i got like all the people in front of me and when yeah doesn't he do it though like he when does he asks for and it every you know? every time that i've uh that i've had that happen afterwards <laughs> after the affirmations that people like like dude oh my god you have like a silver tongue like, you're just, like, spitting off stuff. Like, where did that come from? Like, I have no clue. And you probably don't even, like, necessarily remember, like, everything no, that I you don't. said. That's the but, thing. And they, but they know, you yeah, know, because they, they were know. listening to you. <laughs> and most of the time it goes like that where I'm like, oh, my God, what did I even say, like, during that? Like, I black out for part of it because right. it's just, like, he's speaking to me. Right. It's not even, you know, right. really me. Um, he's like man you asked for it you yeah know? you <laughs> asked for it and it's almost always like because most of the time it was like the way it worked was like one person was in the circle mm -hmm. and we'd all go around 
saying whatever the affirmation was to that one person would right. always switch out. And almost always, whatever I said was exactly what that person needed to hear. And That's they amazing. like they like break down crying. And I'm like, I have no clue. It's because God was speaking uh, through you. Exactly. Yeah. You know? Um but yeah. I think I think what you were saying, especially like with, with uh family members and friends that like have a specific um thought mm-hmm. that you know might be wrong. Mm-hmm. The first thing you should do is like, okay, God, like I wanna correct them and, and help them understand what's wrong about it and what is what what you, you can do right. Mm-hmm. The first thing you should do is ask him to guide your tongue. Right. You know, talk through me. I think so. You know. Yeah. So, um, in finishing with everything, um, I feel like we need to read um, a verse out of the Bible. And this is Philippians 4, 6, and 7. It says, Have no anxiety at all, but in everything, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, make your requests known to God. Then the peace of God that surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. No. I like that. A yeah. lot. Um, it kind of sums up what we were saying, though, like, like leaning to him. Right. During it all. Right. Because, uh, like, life in general, um, I've, like, I've had a, my moments where, like, um, you know, no anxiety. I'm like, oh my God, today's like awesome. And, but I never once thought to thank him of like, like th- that day I did not have it. Right. Um, or like, and then like the worst days ever, don't lean on, I didn't lean on him. Right. Right. And like where it says, make your request known to God. Mm. How we were talking about how in those situations, yeah. you know, my requests for you to to speak through me. Right. You know, like, I need your help right now. Like, make those requests known. Because yeah. he needs you to ask him for things. Right. Not only does he need us to thank him, but he needs for us to lean on him and to ask him for things. Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah. Um, I like to believe that, like, you know, certain things could be, like, a, a, a fix, a one-time, like, oh, you know. Mm-hmm. I, I don't see uh, having a relationship with God as a okay now I got one it's it we're good it's yeah that's, right. that's it it's an ongoing thing absolutely uh, it's like saying like me like I'm, I'm on medicine for anxiety mm-hmm. and the doctor will say oh we'll just here, here's a pill and it's done and it's gone right <laughs> the most false information false advertising <laughs> thing that could ever come knock on your door right is take this and everything will be great right it's the same thing with God's relationship, I think people don't understand that is that it's not just pray to Him and a miracle happens. And then you're done. Then you're done. No. It's continue after He's given it to you. That's right. It's a life changing thing. Yeah. Like you have to make it, you have to make Him part of your life. Right. Yeah. Or where are we going? Yeah. You know? <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> Thank you all so much for listening. We would love to hear your feedback and anxiety experiences. Please go ahead and check us out on Instagram at Marking Milestones.